chapter number 9, excuse me, chapter number 8, verse 29. Uh, we find our foundational text, and it reads on this wise, it says, For whom God did foreknow, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be, that Jesus might be the firstborn among many brethren. Church, I'm teaching from this life-changing, life-building, life-blessing series entitled Showing Forth the Son. Showing Forth the Son. And we know that we're doing that in what year? 2021. We're showing forth the Son in 2021. Part, this is lesson number four. This is lesson number four. Lesson number four. Praise the Lord. And uh, I'm going to let you know right now the title to today's lesson, lesson number four, is your close. Your close. Let's do a little review and we're going to get into the new information. Uh, God's purpose for us, the church, is that we are to conform to the image of the Son of God and give Father God the glory. That's, that's the collective purpose of the church. Now, everybody walks around, come on, what's my purpose? What you really should be trying to figure out is what's God's plan for you. See, he has a plan for you. But really, your pur and once you come into your purpose, the plan is, it just reveals itself. What's the purpose? That I would conform to the image of Christ. It's amazing how a lot of people don't realize that uh, your purpose is to be the very name you say you are, which is a Christian. If we would focus more on actually being uh, than doing, then the doing and the and the accomplishing would just it would just come. Somebody say, "I need to be, I need to be. A, Christian. a Christian." Yeah, you have to really the the number one focus is to to be like Christ. Amen. And once you be like Christ in your thoughts and words and deeds, then God's plan for you is revealed. Because last time I looked, God gives you what he can trust you with. The, one of the reasons that the plan is not totally revealed is because God hasn't confirmed that he can trust you yet. Once God knows he can trust you, guess what? Then he releases everything to you. Say amen, somebody. Now, key statement for today is, key statement for today. What am I talking about today? The title of the day is, you're close. I said, you're close, people. I said, you're close. Somebody said, I'm close. Are right, you going to get it in a minute? Key statement for the day is, listen, the closer you are to victory, the greater the adversity. Right. Did you hear what I said today? The closer you are to victory, the greater the adversity. I, I, I mean, we, we're sitting around, walking around, realizing that we're catching hell. Hell's in the Bible. We're catching hell, and, 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 and we're starting to you know, feel sorry for ourselves. We're starting to get a little depressed. Starting to get a little, you know, losing a little hope. Well, I just got news for you. You need to regain your hope because the the the, the greater the adversity, the closer you are to the victory. Come on. In other words, you, you ever run a race and, and, and the closer you get to that finish line, the more tired you get. Come on, church, talk to me today. It, the, 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 it's always darkest before the dawn. And I'm here to tell you today, I stopped by to tell you here today. Online and offline, you need to know the word from the Lord said today that you're close. Mm. In fact, here's the thing. I'm, I, I, you need to get this today. You're closer than you think. You're closer than you think. This church is closer than we think. And I got news for you. We, as a people in this country, with this pandemic and all of the problems that it has brought, the, the deliverance from all of this is closer than we think. Come on, church. Give God some praise right there. I said, we're close. We're close. We're closer than we think. That's why we got to really be praying for our president. We have to really be praying for his team of health professionals. We have to really be praying for this new uh, vaccine from Johnson and Johnson. We have to really be praying for the rollout. He's talking, he has a, he has a goal of uh, a million vaccines in the first hundred days, last time I looked, a uh, one million times a hundred is what? A hundred million. That, that's a big number, isn't it? Somebody say, we're close. we're close. We can do this thing. So watch this now. I need you to know 
that, to, let me deal with that again, that the closer you get to the actual victory, the greater the adversity. Uh, you know, I think one of the reasons that this happens is because, you know, God, the Father, has allowed the devil uh, some space and place and time in the earth. Can I get an amen? Amen. Yes, he's allowed the devil some space, but, but the devil's time is running up. And when the devil's time is up, is about up, he starts to really kick it and scream then. When he knows, it's just like what happened with this man in the White House. When he knew he was getting ready to go out of the White House, he really started kicking up his heels then. I mean, he's like, oh, no, I ain't leaving. Then he really, instead of him just lying down and saying, okay, I'm ready to go, the closer he got ready, got, the closer he got to getting put out, the, the crazier he got. Because the devil, when the devil knows that his time is short, that's when he really starts kicking up his heels, and that's when he really starts putting adversity on you. But you need to understand the greater adversity, the, great, the closer I am to the victory. Come on, church. You need to, you got to get back. Well, I just don't really, why is everything, it seems like instead of uh, things getting easier, it's just getting harder. Yeah, I mean, 2020 was bad enough, now it's 2021, and now they're talking about a new strain. And they say the new strain uh, is 70% uh, more contagious. And now they're talking about it could be more deadly. Oh, Lord, it's just gone from bad to worse. I went from the frying pan to the skillet. But I want you to understand that, yeah, the heat done turned up. But listen, when you turn the heat up on a particular dish on the oven or on the, on the, on the stove, guess what? That just means it's closer to being done. I'm telling you that we're close to getting to breaking through the troubles, the problems that we've been going through. Some of us have been going through it for a long time. And you say, well, what else can happen? But I'm here to tell you that the breakthrough that God has promised you, you're close. You need to give God some praise right there. You're close. Now listen to me. I heard this story about a man who uh, was a hiker. And uh, he liked to hike, you know. And so he was on vacation and they told him about this hike that he could take. And the man said, you know, yeah, okay, I'm gonna, the, the, the locals hike this. So I'm going to go and I'm going to hike this thing. And he said, you know, I'm in good shape. He said, they, they, the guys, people told him, this is a really, it's a really big hike now. Are you sure you're up to? He said, yeah, I'm, I'm going to do it. I, I can hike. So he went on and he started hiking up the trail. And the more he hiked up that trail, you know what happened. You know what happens when you get in a higher altitude. The air gets thinner. And he started, he started breathing harder. And, he, and, and his legs got a little tighter. And he said, good Lord. And he got to a place where his legs were really aching. And he had to stop and take a breath. And he said, you know, he said, I thought I was in shape. He said, I never hiked a trail like this. He said, I thought I was in shape. He said, but this is, this is really tough. And he was getting ready to turn around because he just felt like I'm, I'm about, you know, I think I'm about, you know, two thirds of the way there. He said, I'm not at the top yet and I'm already really huffing and puffing. And he was getting ready to turn around until all of a sudden he saw this man coming toward him. And it was an elderly man. Mm -hmm. And the man came up to him. He didn't know him, and he didn't know him. And the man just looked at him, and he, he, he just said something simple to the man. And you never guess what he said to him. He said, you're closer than you think. Mm -hmm. And the man heard him say that. And he just, and the, and the elderly man went on his way. I guess the younger man looked at him and said, well, he said, and I guess I, can, I guess I better step up my game. The man said, you're closer than you think. Turn your neighbor and say, you're closer than you think. You're closer than you think. Church, I want you to know that that younger man, when he heard that something on the inside just caused him to say, let me just continue on. And he continued on, and he continued on, and guess what? He made it all the way to the top, and when he got to the top, he looked and said, I have never seen a view like this in all my life. Thank God I didn't faint. Thank God I didn't falter. Thank God I didn't give up. Thank God I didn't turn around. Because like the man said, I was closer than I thought. Y'all didn't pray with me. Come on, somebody. There it is. Oh, there it is. You, he said, you were closer than you think. Church, I want you to know that this is not, what I'm talking to you about today, is not just a nice story. It's a biblical proposition. 
It's all throughout the Bible. So we're going to do a little case study. We're going to find it all throughout the Bible. Let's first of all look at the foundational uh, uh, basis of this statement that you're close. And in, in Hebrews chapter number 12, in Hebrews chapter number 12, it says, verse 1, it says, Therefore, therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight. In other words, this is not a sprint. This is a long distance journey. And there's some things that have been holding us back. We got to dump off unforgiveness. We got to dump off negativity. We got to dump off uh, 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 profanity. We got to dump off unholiness. Somebody say dump it off. So cast it off. Just dump it off. Just get, get rid of that. Because we, we're climbing up the mountain and we don't need any excess what? Baggage. Come on, brother. We don't need it. Listen, if you on out on the sea and you sink it, you know what the first thing you do is you throw everything overboard that's <laughs> not nailed down. Can I get an amen? Somebody say, throw it over if it's not nailed down. In other words, it's not a part of your central nature. You better get rid of that. So all the bad thinking, gossiping, uh, 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 accusatory thinking, negative thinking, get rid of it. So he says, lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset you. Oh, that really means that sin that, that, that one that really beset you, really throw that one over. If drunkenness besets you, throw it over. If, 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 if uh, marijuana addiction besets you, throw it over. If pornography is the one, if that's your sin of choice, you better th get rid of it and, and, and <laughs> you what they say, and throw it over. So he says, and let us run with endurance the race that is set be for us. Next slide. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Church, I need you to know that we can see this all throughout the Bible. You are closer than you think, but you can't give up. You, you look, look at this man, Joseph. There was a man named Joseph. Y'all remember him, right? He was, uh, he was uh, uh, one of 12 sons. He was the 11th uh, oldest son, so he was the second to the youngest. And his father... His father just loved him. And when Joseph was young, Joseph had a dream. And God said, you're going to be a leader of a nation. Well, that happened when Joseph was 17 years old. But I'm here to tell you, Joseph, I'm here to tell you, Joseph, that uh, when God tells you something is going to happen in your life, guess what? It's going to happen. Amen. Somebody say it's going to happen. Now, you have to run with patience the race that is set before you. In other words, it's going to take some time. And everybody knows, you all know the story, right? Joseph uh, was, was uh, envied by his brothers, and so he was, they wanted to kill him. But instead of killing him, they threw him down in the pit. And from the pit, he went to the slave owners. The slave traders took him to Potiphar's house. So he went from this pit, and then he went to Potiphar's house. And then Potiphar's wife lied on him and said he tried to rape her. Then he went from the pit to the, to, the, to the Potiphar house to the prison. Now, here's the point I'm trying to make to you. The man was in a pit, right? You, you know, you ever, uh, in, in life, you ever get tempted to say, oh, Lord, what, what, I, what, this is so bad. Uh, what else can happen? Somebody say, don't say that. Don't say that. Because <laughs> there's some other stuff that can happen. That's why we got to live constantly in a state of thanksgiving because there's the worst thing to happen. He was in the pit, then he was a slave in Potiphar's house, and he, and he, and he thought, well, what if the worst can happen to that? Well, he got thrown into prison because he was falsely accused. Now, here he was in the prison. Now, in the pit, he thought he was going to die. In Potiphar's house, he thought he was going to be a slave for the rest of his life. But in the prison, he, he, he was pretty sure his life was over. He was sure his life was over. Then one day, the Lord sent uh, one of the king's uh, uh, servants in there, and he said, "Now uh, he said, if I tell you what the, 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 what your dream was about, uh, and, and you get released, he said, when you get back to the king, he said, don't forget me. Put in a good word with me. Put in a good word for me with the king, right? And it happened just like that. Joseph interpreted the dream. The the, the, the baker, excuse me, the butler went back to the king, and but the butler forgot about it." Joseph felt like, here, I'm going to spend the rest of my life in prison, and nobody's going to remember me. Somebody say, you're closer, you're closer. than you think. Amen. All this stuff that Joseph went through, it, 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 it went from bad to worse. I don't know who I'm talking to today, 
But whatever has been going on in your life, sometimes you may feel like it's gone from bad to worse. It, 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 it'd be one thing if you said, well, you know what? Uh, when, when, they, when, when I was at Potter's house, I could see maybe one day I could work off my slave servitude and maybe one day. But now I'm in the prison and I'm really, it's gone from bad to worse. How is God going to get me out of here? Somebody said, how God? <laughs> How is God going to get? But I need you to know that you're closer than you think. Why, Pastor? Why? Because it's always darkest before the dawn. The adversity is always greater before the victory. It seems like and you're going the wrong way. It seems like you're going downward instead of going upward. But God has a way of allowing the devil to pour out on you his greatest adversity, his greatest attacks. They're talking about you at your job. And you've gone from, you, you went from a promotion to a demotion, and now everybody's talking about you, and now it looks like you're getting ready to get fired. Oh, wait a minute. And, and, oh, and, and you did get fired. You got let go. But I'm here to tell you that that great adversity is the prelude to your great victory. You just got to stay in faith. Come on, church. Come on, church. When Joseph, when Joseph was left in that prison, and that man, did not come back for him as he promised he would. Did not tell the king, the pharaoh, as he promised he would. Guess what? God honored his word. And he told in 13 years after Joseph had that dream, God talked to that pharaoh's heart, made him have that dream, and made him need an interpretation. And then that butler remembered, there's a man in the prison, and he can interpret the dream. In other words, Joseph was down there where it looked like it was no hope. Joseph was down there where it looked like it was no light. But all of a sudden, there became a little light at the end of the tunnel. They took him out of there. He interpreted the dream. The Pharaoh was so happy. The Pharaoh said, I'm making you the old governor. You'll be second in command underneath me. What am I telling you? It sure looked bad. It looked worse than bad. It was so bad. It was, uh, we need a new word, worse than bad. But church, God was able to lift him up. You know why? Because he was closer than he thought. Give God some praise. He was closer. Than, he was right there. God already knew when he was going to do it. But see, the thing you got to remember is this. When Joseph was down in that prison, guess what? The prison wasn't in him. The Bible says he was the trustee of the prison. You know, you don't get to be the trustee of the prison without being uh, you know, trustworthy. Yeah, you, you get to be the trustee because even though you're in prison, somehow you kept a good attitude. I mean, I'm talking to somebody here today. You might be in that prison called shut in. You might be in that prison called stay at home order. You might be in that prison called COVID. You got that. But guess what? You can keep a good attitude even in yeah. shut in, shut out, shut up, and everything else. But you just stay because you need to just remind yourself that what? That you're close. You're closer than you think. And, and, and just like that old man that told the young man on that mountain, he said, he, he didn't even ask him his name. He just looked at him. He said, he looked him in the eye and he said, you're closer than you think. When that young man heard that, he said, that's all I needed to hear today. Well, guess what? I'm like that old man today telling you, you're closer than you think. Don't you worry about how you, your body feels. Don't you feel? Don't worry about how tired you feel. Don't worry about how it looks and how you think. Like I'll never get to the top. Guess what? You're closer. Ooh, come on, somebody. Than you think. Come on, church. I said you're closer than you think. Well, let's see, let's examine uh, 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 our next uh, uh, subject. His name is David. His name is David. You know, David. Uh, David was. Uh, uh, he was a little shepherd boy, and uh, he, all he was doing was just being faithful to God. He was in his own type of prison because he was out in the shepherd field, and nobody was with him. He was minding the sheep by himself. All his brothers were in the army and doing all this stuff, but you know, the Lord was whispering in David's ear, and he was saying, you know what? He said, son, you're closer than you think. And just when David thought that his lot in life was just to, to, to guard over some sheep, what did God do? God sent somebody. Boy, God is in the send somebody business. Come on, church. Y'all missed that. I said, come on, somebody. God is in the I'll send somebody business. He sent a man named Samuel to David's house. And here's how, here's how deep God is. When the man got to the house and David wasn't there, Samuel was there to anoint the next king of Israel. 
because Saul had messed up. When the man got to the house, David had seven brothers. When, when Saul, Samuel got to the house and said, I want to anoint the next king of Israel, and the father just said, well, well uh, you know, here's my sons, and he went through all of them and said, these are not the ones. He said, don't you have another son? He said, yeah, but he's just a little ruddy boy, and he's just in the, in the field watching the sheep, and he said, bring him here. What God is saying is, when I send somebody, when I send somebody for you, listen to me very carefully. When I send somebody for you, even if you're not where they can find you, he said, the blessing is so great, they'll track you down. Y'all didn't hear me today. I said, the blessing is so great, it's going to track you down. Glory. In other words, you might not physically be in the church today, but the, but, but, but the anointing and the calling and the blessing of God uh, to get you at the time when it's your time, it's your season, because you're close, it's going to track you down. In my Bible, it says in Deuteronomy 28, it says if you obey the Lord, the blessing will track you down. Come on, church. It said the blessing will track you down. David wasn't at the house. Uh, David was in the field, but when the anointing came looking for David, David wasn't in the house. They said, well, go find him because we ain't leaving until we bless him. Somebody say, God is not going to be done. He's not going to leave or pass by until he tracks you down because you're close. Come on. He's going to track you down and bless you. Am, am, am I right about it, somebody? So he went out and he got David and he anointed him alone. But the story doesn't stop there. David eventually, come on, he eventually becomes king. Of course, you know, he slew Goliath and becomes king. Uh, excuse me, he slew Goliath, but he wasn't king yet. He slew Goliath. Saul was still king. He was helping Saul as the king. And uh, Saul became jealous because when they go out to battle, the women sang the song. Saul has slain his thousands, but David has slain his tens of thousands. So Saul became jealous and became so jealous that he wanted to kill David, even though David is the one who was making his army look good. Right. How many of you all have been in a situation where the more you do something nice for somebody, the more they try to, to jack you up? The, I mean, the more you help helping somebody, then they, here they are trying to, you know, you doing all this nice for them, and they're returning your good with evil. No, y'all don't know what I'm talking about. I can't hear I mean, I mean, that's that's like, that, that, that we were talking about this yesterday uh, in, 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 in our training. He said, boy, you know, there's, there's one kind of trauma that really hurts. He said, what is that? The kind when you're really nice to a person. We're talking about wounds of the heart. Boy, there's no kind of wound of the heart like it is when you just, the, the person that you're the nicest to is the person that you're nice to them, you give them the last crumb off your plate, and what they do is they give you the foot on your butt. They kick you in the butt. Can you believe that? Isn't that something? You give them their, your all in all, and then they end up kicking you in the butt. Somebody say, but God. But God. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So David, Saul tried to kill David, but David didn't try to kill Saul. Did y'all hear what I said? Somebody say, that's Jesus. <laughs> Did you hear what I said again? Saul, let me say it again. Saul tried to kill David, yeah. but David swore he would not kill Saul. Yeah. In fact, there were two times I remember in the scripture where David was right there where Saul was sleeping in a cave. Saul was chasing him, and then David uh, 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 got the drop on him. He, 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 he went on down there, climbed on down the mountain where the cave was, where Saul was. And he went down there, and he got right by Saul. But he, and, his, and his men said, go on and kill him. Kill him. We'll be done with He won't be able to get us no more. He's chasing us. Kill him, baby. Kill him. They said, no. Touch not my anointing. Do my prophet no harm. He said, he's the king. And as long as he's the king, I got to respect the king. I'm not going to do that to the king. And then when Saul woke up, he said, David, he said, I'm going to kill you. And David said, you better leave me alone. He said, I could have killed you. And Saul said, what you talking about? And he said, look at this piece right here. This is a piece of your robe right here. He said, I was standing right over you while you were sleeping, and I could have killed you. He said, you better step up off of me, homie. I, I mean, it was something like that in the scripture. Y'all understand. It was, it was I, I, you know, you read it. I was reading with it, you know, anyway. It was the new, the new hood translation. But anyway, he was saying, step off, homie, because I could have took you out. But you better, you better, yeah, last night, you better back up off me. Shoot. And so anyway... But guess what? Even after that, Saul kept hunting and hu hunting and hounding David. And he just kept on, kept on, kept on. And, and, and guess what? God spoke to David. He said, David, he said, I know you're tired. 
He said, David, I know it's rough when somebody's trying to do evil to you and you have to do nice to them. David, I know it's been a long journey. You're trying to escape that spear of Saul. He said, but I just got two words for you, David. And you know what God said? You close. Come on, somebody. He said, David, you close. Don't worry about it, David. Don't you worry. He said, you're close. He said, I got you. He said, I got you. He said, somebody, somebody said, I'm close. He said, the reason that you're going through all this hell, David, is because, he says, you, when you get close to your victory, the devil raises his adversity. When you, the closer you get, listen, it's always darkest before the dawn. Weeping endures for night, but come on, church, joy comes in the morning. Somebody say, joy is coming. Somebody, somebody say, joy is coming. You better claim it right now. Say, joy's coming. Say, I'm close. Yeah, say, I'm closer than I think. There are some things that you have been hoping for. There are some things you've been praying for. There are some things you've been believing God for. There are some things you've been enduring a uh, 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 time and uh, energy and the trials of life for. And God is trying to tell you the same thing he said in the New Testament through the Apostle Paul. He told him in Galatians chapter 6 verse 9, he said, Let us not grow weary in well-doing, for in due season you will reap if you faint not. I said you're close. So don't you stop praying. Don't you stop forgiving. Don't you stop giving. Don't you stop loving. Don't you stop reading your word. Because you have been putting in a lot of time. Boy, I'm so proud of this church. I can't, I'm telling you my buttons are popping off. This church and the financial partners of this ministry, y'all have been sowing and tithing and giving in a pandemic. And I got news for you. You're close. Give God some praise. You're close. You're close all the time. Ah, ah. I've been preaching this thing for a long time, and some of y'all still don't tithe, but that's okay. Guess what? I'm talking to the tithers today. You're close. God is going to do something for you because he honors the tithers. There's no way that God can say, if you tithe, prove me now in this, if I will not. He, he, in other words, God said, I put you to the test in this. If you tithe, he said, I will. I will. Open up the windows of heaven. Now, Lord, all you had to say is a window as far as I'm concerned. But you said windows. Somebody said pour out, Lord God. That means there's so many blessings. It is coming in different. It, I like it when one pastor said, he says, I have streams of income. In other words, God is saying stuff is coming to you in different streams. Somebody say the north, the south, the east, the west. It's coming in all kind of directions. Say you're close. I'm close. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm receiving it right now in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. But then we talked about, we talked about, who do we talk about first? We talked about Joseph, right? Mm -hmm. We talked about David, right? Yep. Well, guess what? We saved the best for last. Who do we look to? Who's the chief example, Sarah? It's Jesus. It's Jesus. Can I get an amen? It's Jesus. Glory to God. Look at it, church. It says Hebrews 12 and 2. Look at it. Jesus. Hebrews 12 and 2. It says what? Looking unto Jesus. Somebody say Jesus. Jesus. Say it again. Say Jesus. Jesus. I mean, it is great to look at Joseph. It is great to look at David. But in fact, those are all prefigurings of Jesus. Joseph, who was sold out by his brothers, he was a prefiguring of Christ. Because Christ was sold out by his brothers. David, praise the Lord, who was the king of Israel, he was a prefiguring of who? Christ, because who's the king of Israel? Jesus. Jesus is the king of kings, right? So watch this. Looking at the Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. What am I trying to tell you? You're close, but the intensity of the adversity is going to be greatest closer to your victory. And the way that Jesus was able to deal with that intensity of adversity, he kept looking at the victory that was before him. Keep your eyes on Jesus and keep your eye on the joy that is set before you. Did you hear what I said? Stop, just stop focusing on the negativity and keep your eye on the positivity. Keep your eye on the prize. Keep your eye on the fact that you are close and you and it's just a little time now. You know, I love it in the scripture where it says this light affliction is only for a moment. The light affliction 
is only for a moment. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hand that to this brother right there. And let me see. He said, the light affliction is only for a moment. Somebody say, it's light. It's light. Say, and it's, and, it's, and it's fleeting. So watch this now. Here we go. We got to get this going. We got to get this going. He says, the joy that was set before me endured the cross, despite the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne. What was he saying? When he was on that cross, suffering and bleeding and about to die, what was his focus? His focus was, after this, I'm going to be sitting at the right hand of the Father. Somebody say, after this, after this I got the victory. Got the say, victory. after this mess, after this mess say, after this pain, after this pain I'm going to be riding high. I'm going to be riding high. And say, I'm close. I'm Give close. God a hand clap right there. Say, I'm close. All right, watch this now. And if, you, and if you ever start to waver in your faith, guess what the scripture tells us to do? I love this. This is verse number three. Verse number three. Verse number three. Here we go. Hebrews verse number three. It says, for consider him. Who's him? Jesus. Yeah. Who endured such hostility from sinners against himself. In other words, if you think that somebody's uh, 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 eating on you and beating on you and beefing on you and, mm -hmm. and, 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 and pressing you down, oh. white supremacists, black supremacists, your mama, your daddy, whoever, he said, just remember Jesus. Everybody was against him. He said he endured the hostility of sinners against him. He said, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. And then here's the punchline. Verse 4, he said, don't you get weary. He said, because though they talked about you, though they've done things about you, they haven't stuck a knife, in, a literal knife in you yet, and you ain't been bleeding. So he said, don't, he said, he said, you have not suffered uh, 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 resisting under blood. He said, Jesus, he kept his eye on the prize and realized victory is coming even while he was bleeding out. He said, you're not bleeding out right now, so you keep the faith and hold on. Come on, somebody. Keep the faith. You're not bleeding out. Come on now. It's not as bad as you think. Well, here, so there's two takeaways today. It's not as bad as you think. And you're closer than you think. Y'all didn't hear me. I, I said, the, the thing you want to leave with today is it's not as bad as you think. And you're closer to your victory than you think. So then what's the operative word in both of those statements? Think. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say it again. It's not as bad as you think. Mm -hmm. And you're closer to the victory and to the breakthrough than you yeah. think. Yeah. What is the common denominator word? Think. As a man thinketh, so is he. It's not, somebody says, it's not as bad, not as, bad. as I think. In other words, it could be worse. Somebody saying, I'm closer than I think. See, you can't see the top of that mountain. Just like some days you can't see the sun because of clouds. But guess what? It's there. The sun is there. And guess what? The, the, the victory, the time when we walk to the top of this mountain and we look over the mountaintop and we say, I don't see any more COVID-19. I don't see any more masks. The church is filled again. You know what happened? This uh, yesterday was that yesterday or Friday? That was Friday. Brother Daryl and I were down there, and we were getting the audio together. And you'll never guess what we did. The Lord spoke to my heart, and He said, "Pastor," He said, "You know, you were having uh, uh, outside service, and, and 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 Brother Weber and all the men were helping you. Brother Steve and Brother Cook, Brother uh, Cole Pepper were helping you take uh, Brother Clay. Were helping you take the speakers outside for the outdoor service." He said, "Do you realize since you've gone back inside, what you haven't done?" I said, what, Lord? He said, you haven't reset up the audio in the fellowship hall. Right. And I said, really, Lord? And I said, well, you know, it's going to be a while before we get back in there. He said, faith means I go first. We go first. He said, start setting it up now. He said, because you're closer than you think. It's gonna, it ain't going to be that long before we're having food fellowships again. It ain't going to be, but when, but when it's time, the music is already set up. We got it set up yet on Friday, everybody, because we're looking uh, uh, for the joy that is set before. We're looking to get to the top. We're looking to that day where we're going to walk all the way to the top, and we're going to have church again, but this time, it's going to be better. And this time, like it has been prophesied, you better come early, because you
you ain't gonna get no seat. You go, you better come early. Cause when this thing opens back up again, it's gonna be pressed down, shaking together, and running over. Church is not as bad as you think. Church, you're closer than you think. The fact that you are still here means that you're still in the game. Did you hear me? There's a lot of people that died from this COVID, but the fact that you're still here means that you're still in the game and you are closer to the promise than you have ever been. Church, you need to give God some praise. Don't lose heart. Don't lose hope. Don't lose faith. You're closer than you think. Give God some praise. Glory to your name, Father. Glory to your name, Father. We thank you, Lord. We receive it by faith. Hallelujah. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Saints are praying. We never want to take it for granted that everybody under the sound of my voice knows the Lord Jesus Christ. If you don't know Christ like we know Christ, which means that he's the, the, the light and the life of our lives, then you just open up your heart and receive him. Receive him as your Lord and Savior with this simple prayer. Say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I repent of my sin. I repent of my sin. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. As my Lord and Savior. As my Lord and Savior. I believe that you lived. I believe that you lived. In this earth. In this earth. Without sin. Without sin. You died on the cross. You died on the cross. To pay for our sins. To pay for our sins. You rose from the dead. You rose from the dead. To prove that you conquered sin. To prove that you conquered sin. Therefore. Therefore. You are the Son of God. You are the Son of God. You are Lord. And now, and now, you are my Lord and Savior. You, Lord and Savior. you prayed that prayer, you meant it from the heart. Jesus is your Lord and Savior. You are saved. All your sins are forgiven. And the prophecy that came forth today, that you're close, you're close. That means that through Christ, you're closer than you think. Whatever has been promised you, don't, don't give the pandemic any weight that it doesn't deserve. Don't give it any power that it doesn't deserve. I didn't say don't be naturally wise. You know there's natural wisdom, there's spiritual wisdom. I didn't say don't be naturally wise and wear masks. What I'm telling you is don't be uh, discouraged, don't be fearful, don't be diffident, don't be in despair because this too will pass and it's going to pass soon. Let's be intense in our prayer life. Let's intensely pray that the president, his cabinet, his team, they'll have the, the grace and favor of God and that these vaccines will work, that they'll work not only, in fact, I want everybody to listen to this. From time to time, I've asked people about this scripture, but I want everybody to listen to this. Ephesians chapter number three and verse number 20. Write it down, remember it, memorize it. If you don't know it by heart, that's your homework assignment. It says, now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power of the Holy Spirit that works on the inside of us. You all need to realize our God is not limited by our thinking. He's not limited by our strength. He's not limited what you think about him. God said to us in Isaiah, he said, are my arms now too short? Is my strength now too weak? He said, listen, I'm God. I can do this. I just, I just want you to have faith. We're not going to put any limits on God. God is going to work in the name of Jesus. He's going to bring the vaccines and all this stuff about where they don't know how to get them distributed. That's because we didn't have the right administration. And God is the one that got that out the way because he said he brings them up and he takes them down. He got the bad administration and leadership out of the way. I'm, I'm not playing no more. I don't care who doesn't like it. This pastor is going to, to be a, a, a warrior for this administration so that we can get out of this problem because God wants us to be set free. And whom the Son sets free is free indeed. God bless you. God keep you. Don't forget, you all can contact us on the email. The email address should be right up on the screen. Praise the Lord. And uh, write us. And uh, let us know if you got saved today. Let us know if you want to be a part of this ministry. Let us know if you want some tracks. We love you. 
God bless you. And remember, don't forget the word that came today. It's yours if you receive it. You're close. You're closer than you think. Don't let anybody turn you around. Don't let anybody cause you to go back down that mountain. You press on toward the very top and all of a sudden, as, the, as that old song said, I can see clearly now. I can see clearly now. You'll be able to see that it's your season, it's your time, it's your breakthrough because you believe the word of God. God bless you, God keep you. We love you. Now may the Lord bless and keep you. May his countenance shine upon you. May he encourage you with his word and empower you by his spirit. And may the Lord now lift you up where you belong in Jesus' holy name. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. Amen. Amen again. Love you. See you next week on the broadcast. Invite somebody. God bless you.